Hello to my brothers and sisters in Christ out there. Title of this video, Maranatha? Question mark. And it got me to thinking. <coughs> we always say, Lord come, Lord come, please come today, please come today. Should that really be our attitude? The Bible talks about uh, pray that God doesn't tarry, Jesus doesn't tarry, um, that we're to look for His coming and but what does it really mean to look for the coming of Jesus Christ to catch away his body of Christ, uh, his body, his bride? And the Lord really put this on my heart to thinking that we're, I sit out here all the time, so I'm not a hypocrite. I sit out here all the time. I look in the sky today. It's a beautiful day. It's just blue skies. But every time I see a little, little cloud, just something little on a day like this, I'll be like, that's good enough. Is today the day? I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, is today the day? But instead of saying, Lord, come today, I think the question we should be asking ourselves is, Lord, am I ready for you to come today? Okay. What I'm talking about is what I've talked about in a lot of studies, is, um, is your heart right with the Lord? Is your home a godly home? You know? If God came, if Jesus Christ came, knocked on your door, and I always say this, yes sir, he's our commanding officer, and he's doing a surprise inspection of your home, my home, and he's going to do an audit on your computer, and he's going to go through the house, and he's going to check everything. When he's done, now, don't get me wrong, it's Jesus Christ. He's going to find something wrong with my house because I'm not perfect. Um, my computer, I used to watch porn, video game. I played video games, movies and TV shows, secular music, and I've deleted most of that stuff off, but every once in a while I'll, came, I'll come across a folder that's a saved game folder, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, where the game itself is off the computer, but it saves the save file on there, and I'm like, that's temptation, it's like I'm being tempted, and I'll delete that, so I know Jesus might find something on my computer. and. I've gotten most of it clean, most of it out. I don't, I'm just saying, I'm not perfect. God will find something. But if God did that, Jesus Christ did a surprise inspection on your home, would He come, t when He's all said and done and come out, would He be proud of you? Or would He be ashamed of you? When we say, Lord, come, we need to stop saying, Lord, come. We need to start asking ourselves and say, Lord, am I ready for you to come? Is my heart right with you? Is my life, my, my home, uh, my God, is my home a godly home, a God-fearing home? Um, Ephesians 5 talks about the changed life, so you can go there and read and use that, but I have my King James Bible, because I'm a King James Bible believer. I have my Bible, and I have my Bible, <laughs> my memory verses that I walk on the, the beach with, okay? Now... We're going to go through some of these. This message is going to be a two-part message. All right, the first part is, we should be at, you should be asking yourselves, am I ready for you to come today, Lord? It's not about the wicked world. We look at how wicked this world is and say, Lord, come, please come. Uh, we look at all the signs and how wicked the world's getting, like the signs that the Bible talks about that will happen. And we say, well, Lord's going to come soon. There's nothing wrong with that. But saying, Lord, come, Lord, come. We should be asking ourselves, Lord, am I ready for you to come today? The looking for Jesus Christ is compared to, I believe, your life. The do's and the don'ts. Are you doing what the Bible tells you to do? Are you not doing what the Bible tells you not to do? Okay. Are you guarding your heart? Uh, are you protecting your family as a husband? Uh, is your home a godly home? You, try, you do your best to get all the wickedness out. TV. Um, I have monitors for my computer. I use little TVs for my computer monitors, but my big TV I got rid of. And this isn't a pat on the back for me. I'm just using it as an example. Movies, TV shows, gone. Video games, gone. I told you in other studies, I, come, I walk around the house and I'll find something that just sticks right in my face that I didn't, it didn't bother me before, but now it does. And even if it's, it just, it's gone, um, is your home a godly home? So we're going to go through some of the instruction and righteousness just to talk about it with the brothers and sisters of Christ out there to get you in that mindset that you're not supposed to be doing like running through the house 24-7. Is there something wrong? Is there something wrong, Lord? 
But anytime you get to that point where you're like, you have those days where you're like, Lord, come today, it'd be better if you stopped and said, you know what, Lord, am I ready for you to come today? Walk the house. Set outside, set inside. If it's snowing outside, I always said, you know, if it's snowing outside, I'd still like to do a fire pit. Not snowing, but if there's a lot of snow outside, it's cold outside, do a fire pit. Uh, put on the, you know, cold gear. But if you're sitting inside, find a place to sit down. Sit down outside if it's summertime, and especially outside. If it's summertime, sit out on the deck, sit out on the porch, and start talking to the Lord. Going over your life and saying, Lord, am I doing right? Is my heart right with you? And start going over things. Okay. Uh, Colossians 2.8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So one of the things you look at in your life is, am I holding traditions of men above the Word of God? You know, if, 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 I, if I could give it into the world, and am I doing things that are the world's way and not God's way? Okay? It's something to look, about, look at. Okay? Let's see. Uh, 1 Peter 1.25, But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Okay. In your life, is this your most prized, physical, prized possession that you have? Are you standing for God's perfect written word in English? Okay. I know there's a Bible that lines up with the King James Bible in German, uh, Spanish, and... I can't think of the others. I think there's a couple other languages where they've gotten Bibles translated that line up with the King James Bible. But for me in English, and for you in English, are you standing for this word? Is your heart right with the Lord by saying, I'm going to stand for this word, I'm going to live this word, I'm going to obey this word, and I am going to pass this word on to other people. I'm going to preach your word, teach your word. Whether you're a parent teaching the children, or God's called you into doing videos and teaching the brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay. 1 Corinthians 2.15 But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. comes back to one of those things where you guard in your heart. Are you going through, um, I don't think I have the verse in here, but uh, judgment must first begin at the house of God. Uh, or not house of God. Uh, yeah, the talking about the church, but you start out with yourself and then the brothers and sisters in Christ in the lost world. So are you judging yourself according to the Word of God? Back to where I said about walking the house. Are you judging things according to the Word of God? Um, you hold your wife and kids accountable to the Word of God. Uh, wives hold their husband and kids account accountable to the Word of God. You're holding the brothers and sisters accountable to the Word of God. So people that go around that says you're not supposed to judge, yes you are. But you're to judge righteous judgment, okay? the Bible says. Okay. Uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Is your house, your home, a God-fearing home? Are you a God-fearing man or woman, brother and sister in Christ? It's something to think about. And what that means is, and I always say this, the fear comes in when it comes to sin. You should fear the Lord when temptation comes up. That fear is supposed to be a motivator to... You know, start reading scripture, start praying, start singing a hymn in your head because you do not want to sin. That fear comes in when uh, the world's trying to pressure you to give in to the world. And we'll get to that verse about be not conformed to the world. Uh, but we'll do it now. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When the world's pressuring you, it's that fear that you're supposed to have, okay, when it comes to sin and temptation. Is your, God, is your house a God-fearing home? Okay, and Romans 8, 28. Uh, and we know that all things work together for good to them that trust God, to them that are called according to His purpose. Um, when bad things happen, um, are you giving God thanks? You know, Are you trusting the Lord? Does your home trust the Lord? Do you individually, as a brother and sister in Christ, do you trust the Lord? Lord, am I ready for you to come back today? You know, one of the things I say a lot. Um, I think it was. It was the man whose son was falling apart. I think 
that the disciples couldn't throw him out. And if I'm wrong, I apologize. But the man is the words he used when Jesus said, Do you believe that I'm capable of doing this? And I'm paraphrasing. And the guy says, I believe, help thou my unbelief. How many of you guys pray that prayer? Where, Lord, I believe, but help me have the strength to keep believing. Don't let me falter. Don't let somebody deceive me, Lord, and get me to turn my back on my faith. What is true? Right? I've seen so many um, professing brothers and sisters of Christ, Bible-believing Christians that have fallen away. And there are some of my do believers saved, but some of them I believe were never saved. Um, they are putting on a show. They just wanted to be part of a club. This is the new thing that they did. It's not new. Uh, Bible-believing Christians have been there since Paul. So Paul, um, you know, he, once everything was written, but I'm talking about the Christians, the churches he wrote to. They believe the letters that Paul wrote. But for someone to come across the Bible-believing movement, it's something new to them, you know. Uh, but do you trust God? Something bad happens. Do you get mad and frustrated? I do sometimes, um, frustrated more than mad. Um, I just, uh, talking to a sister in Christ, that when I hurt myself, there's times I hurt myself, and my, I've taught myself that my ever first response now is I'm always, whether I'm saying it really loud because it hurt, or, you know, it didn't hurt that much, but when I hurt myself, I always say, Lord, have mercy on me. Um, you know, especially when I make mistakes, make bad decisions, Lord, have mercy on me. You don't get mad at the Lord and say, why did this happen? Why did this happen? You're, tr you're to trust the Lord. Okay? Pride goeth forth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16, 18. You know, do you have pride? Do you need to get pride out of your life? Okay? I did a great study on bitterness. Is there bitterness in your heart that you need to give to the Lord? Put it at the front of the cross and say, Lord, take this bitterness out of my heart. Um, I say... Uh, fighting the good fight. This one was about uh, Ephesians 6.12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Are we fighting a good warfare? Uh, we're not supposed to be fighting men. We're supposed to be fighting false teachings, false religions. And you can call out wolves in sheep's clothing, but you do it by attacking their teachings, their false doctrine. Okay? Don't let things get personal. Okay. Uh, thanking the Lord. Always giving thanks in all things. Uh, give God the glory in all things. Uh, making sure you have faith. Without faith it is impossible to please Him. Talk about believing in the Word of God. Um, then I found the one about the judgment. Uh, for the time has come that judgment must first begin at the house of God. And we talked about faith, uh, that you're not given in the trap for the love of money is the root of all evil. While some have coveted after, they've erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Try, I mean, it's, it's tough, and I'm convicting myself as much as the brothers and sisters in Christ out there, you guys. It's tough to, instead of saying, Lord, come, Lord, come, to say, you know, Lord, am I ready for you to come today? Is my home a godly home? Is my heart right with you? And it's tough. And that's something I'm trying to motivate the brethren and give you guys courage to do this. Okay? I come across a lot of people back in the day. I don't come across much anymore because uh, I, I try to you know, not steer clear of the comments. I try to answer people's comments, but I don't want to fall into that trap where I'm always going on there to see who's saying what and if I need to attack. attack. If I need to correct anybody or or what and it's like that's the way I was in the past uh, once I found out about the comment section but you need to focus on yourself so I want you guys to be courageous I want you guys to have courage I want to encourage the brethren the body of Christ to always do a self-reflection um, I talked about this before that's what communion is it's talk, uh, doing a self-reflection but you don't always have to eat bread and drink wine it's to help you remember and you should do that every once in a while but it never hurts and it's always a good good thing to do what I said every once in a while when you get that days going bad um, or you just look at the world and see how wicked it is and you want to say Lord come instead of saying that say Lord am I ready for you to come do a little walk of the house you know 
Sit with the Lord and pray and talk with the Lord about your life. Sometimes, and I almost forgot to say this, uh, go through that list of the old man and say, hey, am I re trying to resurrect the old man? Um, how am I doing on these struggles and temptations that I'm going to be struggling with till the day I die? How am I doing, Lord? Uh, I need your help in this area. I need your help in that area. Um, our attitude should be, is our heart right with the Lord? Are we ready for the Lord as the brothers and sisters in Christ? The lost world isn't, and they're not going to be. But are we ready? And there's nothing wrong with sitting there looking up and saying, Lord, is today the day? Saying, is day today? Not saying, Lord, come back today, but is today the day? So part one of the message is self-reflection. Okay? Try to say, am I ready for you to come back today, Lord? But if you were to go through my heart, like, like it's a house, my heart, you know, temple for the Holy Ghost, if God did uh, an inspection of your heart, is my heart right with the Lord? Does it reflect by how I live, by how I talk, what I stand for, my home being a godly home? Okay. Now, part two of the message of Maranatha. I looked at that and I started to make kind of a big deal and I've had people tell me it's not that big of a deal and it really isn't at first. But God put it on my heart to really look into something and I think it is a big deal in this sense, and if you can follow along. First of all, saying Maranatha means uh, Lord come or Lord has come. And the only time Maranatha is used in the Bible, it's used in conjunction with anathema Maranatha, saying Lord come and curse these people that hate you, basically. He says that do not love you, but the opposite of love is hate. And I think it's Paul that's saying that. I forgot to write it down. Um, so it's not used as a salutation, it's being used as a salutation today. And then the God, the Lord pricked my heart saying, uh, maybe we should look in the Bible and see how men of the Bible used to greet people and say goodbye to people. So let's look at, uh, I want to start in Romans, because I can't remember if the greetings, because Acts is a transition book and it's a historical book. There still might have been a greeting, but let's go to Romans and see what the greeting is there. Uh, chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets concerning his son, prophets in the Holy Spirit. Um, let's see. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ. Let's head over to Corinthians then when he starts writing to the actual churches. Because this is, I was just wondering about Romans, but... Okay, 1 Corinthians. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Soslins, our brothers, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with with all that in every place call upon the name of the Lord Christ, Jesus Christ our Lord, the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Here's the greeting. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. How often do we greet somebody and say, grace be with you and peace from, the, from, Lord, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ? How often do we greet someone and say, grace and peace be with you? How often do we do that? Okay. We always, it's always like people coming up with words like Maranatha, or you know, just saying goodbye, or you have a good day. Um, how often do we actually do that? Okay. Let's go to the very end of 1 Corinthians. Okay, verse 23. How does he say goodbye? Okay. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My love be with you and all, or be with you all in Christ Jesus. So again we see him saying, May the grace of God be with you. And my love for you in Christ Jesus. Okay. That's his salutation. Um, 2 Corinthians, the second time he writes to him, maybe he's going to say something different. 
Verse 2, chapter 1, 2 Corinthians. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, grace and peace. Uh, grace and peace be with you. And I'll probably work on this. Grace and peace be with you, my brethren, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. How often do we greet somebody the way the, the people in the Bible, I mean, we're going to get to Peter and John, how they greeted you. Okay. Now, we can go through all this, and I, I ask you to go through, you go through Ephesians, you go through all the Pauline epistles where he's writing to the churches. Um, and uh, it's, it's grace and peace be with you. And then he always says, before he says goodbye, he ends his letters with, grace be with you and my love for you in Christ Jesus. Not always, but those are the main things. Peace, grace, and my love for you in Christ Jesus. Right. There's a lot of times we say I love you and goodbye, but the grace and the peace. Where's the grace and the peace? Um, Try to get to Peter. <laughs> okay. Right now, my uh, devotions is Peter. Okay. Try to remember if he. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, verse 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. There we see the grace and the peace again. How often do we do that? Like I said, Maranatha, people think I'm getting mean about it. It's not that I'm getting mean about Maranatha. It's Mer when I went through that, and looked at the definition, uh, Lord come. Saying Maranatha by itself doesn't mean anything. Lord come, Lord come. Uh, Maranatha in my heart, Lord come into my heart. Maranatha protect and protect me, Lord come and protect me. Um, just Lord come doesn't really mean much. It's like me saying go there, but I have pointed, but without pointing, without direction, it's me just saying go there. And everybody's like, well, where? No, no, just go there. Go there. Right? Now, I know most of the time when people say Maranatha, almost all the time, it's talking about they're trying to say that the Lord is to come. They're asking the Lord to come and catch his body away, uh, body of Christ away, his bride. And But Maranatha by itself doesn't mean that. Maranatha means Lord come. And it could be used in money things, like uh, Paul used it for as bringing down a curse on the people that hate the Lord. Um... But John, let's see, looks like John only in like verse 3 says that, uh, or 4 about joy, you know, joy be with you. So, um, like I said, this is just a study I did just on the fly with you guys, Brother and Sister Christ. So if you can find other places, but you go through and you, you see those three things time and time again when people are saying hello to the brethren, Paul, and I'm pretty sure everybody else was following Paul's example, grace and peace be with you and my love for you in Christ Jesus. Okay, you're you seeing these as people saying hello, as the salutation for saying hello. That's their greeting. And their salutations when they say goodbye. How come we as the body, pardon me, we as the body of Christ, how come we're not doing that all the time? How come we're not saying grace be with you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, my love be with you. When you're saying goodbye, my love be with you in Christ Jesus. You know? And 
it's just very convicting to me when I was just, and I, I, I agree, I was making a little bit too big of a deal about Maranatha, but then the Lord pricked my heart and said, yeah, it's kind of a big deal, okay? Um, we're not supposed to be going Maranatha as a salutation, as a uh, saying goodbye. We're supposed to be saying, grace be with you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. My love be with you in Christ Jesus. Um, I'm praying, in other words, that love is, you know, I'm praying for you. Um, you know, um, I wish I could be there to encourage you all the time. That, that's the kind of thing with love being with you and in Christ Jesus. Okay? So I just want this to be encouraging for the two parts, okay? Always, 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 when you go to say, Lord Jesus, come today, Mary not the Lord, come, um, stop and say, you know what, instead I need to say, Lord, am I ready for you to come today? If you came today, would you be proud of me, my heart, uh, the home that you've blessed me with, or are you going to be ashamed? And it's a continual process, okay? Anytime I find something... My attitude's going to be like, well, Lord, I guess I wasn't ready for you to come today. Um, and not that I'm not, but that attitude of, I need to be making sure my life is right with the Lord. You know, you fall into t sin and temptation, repent that ASAP and get it, throw it at the foot of the cross, forsake it, and get back to your walk with the Lord and make sure get back to your heart being right with the Lord. Okay? Don't just sit here all the time and say, Lord, come, Lord, come, Lord, come, you know. Come today, Lord. The Lord's the world's so wicked. Come to you need to be asking yourself, Am I ready for you to come today, Lord? And there's nothing wrong with sitting out there looking at this sky. I look at the clouds and say, You know what, Lord? Is today the day? Is today the day? There's nothing wrong with saying, Is today the day? But when you're trying to tell God, You need to come today, Lord. Come, Lord, come today. Lord, you need to come now. Uh, we're not supposed to be doing that. Okay? The Lord has it set up perfectly. He has the day set. He knows exactly when he spoke that he wants to come and the perfect timing for his coming. Okay? We're not supposed to be telling the Lord to come, to come. Um, we know Jesus has come. It's going to come. Okay? I have faith. It's something we need to look forward to. And part two is our greeting. We need to work on that greeting where we're wishing the brothers and sisters in Christ grace and peace from God our Father, from Jesus Christ, okay? May grace and peace with, be with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, and my love uh, be with you in Christ Jesus. So those are two things I want to put on your heart and get the brethren to think about those things, to encourage you that those are the three things we need to be encouraging the brother of Christ, you know, that you need God's grace, uh, we need to have grace for one another, and peace, that God brings peace in your heart and your life, but you've got to make sure your heart goes back to the first part of the message, that your heart's right with the Lord and your home is a godly home and a God-fearing home. But you want peace on your heart, you want peace on your home, and to know that the brethren, that we love one another in Christ Jesus. So, I'm going to end this by saying, grace be with you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ, my love be with you in Christ Jesus. See you in the next video.